With the new Chevy Silverado, you might be driving in this. But with the Silverado's redesigned interior and large infotainment screens, it'll feel more like this. Introducing the new 2022 Chevy Silverado. Find new upgrades. Find new roads. Chevrolet. Hosted by Mistress Candy 69, a lifestyle and professional dominatrix, BDSM educator of 30 years, and cupcake. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the BDSM Alive radio show. Hosted by Mistress Candy 69. Yep, fellas and boys and girls and ladies. Mistress is now back to doing live and recorded shows and I'm just doing a quick little uh show tonight to announce that Saturday's show is going to be airing uh on the network um we are well actually you say not we I there is no more we with this radio show mistress has now taken over and has now gone back to doing recorded and live shows uh, because people have been wondering where I have been for the past several months. So to put it nicely, Mistress has been having some issues with um, the old co-host who used to be on the show, and I'm not going to even refer to that person any longer. Um, It's nice to say that sometimes people can act very immature, especially when they're in the ripe old age of over 50. So I have decided that, um, you know, I am going back to doing what I love to do most is to uh, teach people about proper BDSM, which is bondage, discipline, sadism, and masochism as well as TPE, which is total power exchange, amongst other things in the fetish lifestyle. And I'm very excited. I haven't been on the air in a good, like, four or five months. The last time I was on doing shows with my old co-host, we barely made 5,000 downloads. Kind of interesting, right? I haven't been on in five months, and recently I had logged in to see if there was any activity and oh my god there was tons of activity i got a award for 7500 downloads now pretty good for somebody who hasn't been on the airwaves in quite a number of months um and since i had gone on and did like a recorded show for saturday to announce that i am back on the airwaves doing new shows um, 
I have gotten about a hundred downloads with since yesterday. So it's kind of interesting to see how many, excuse me, of my loyal fans are missing mistress and telling me on social media platforms that they are wondering what the hell happened to me. So it's safe to say in a nutshell that um, sometimes relationships don't work out and that's quite okay. But when you invest a lot of time and love into somebody and then, you know, they go around saying things that aren't true to other people, like for instance, um, See, I don't even want to get into it. It's just, it's it's too much to discuss. If you listen to Saturday's show, which I did a good 45 minutes, uh, this coming Saturday on March 19th is the actual show that I did last night that kind of explains a lot more. So, you know, here I am trying to, per, uh, trying to keep my professionalism and... Sometimes you just kind of have to let it all hang out and kind of speak the truth and, you know, let the listeners kind of decide who was right and who was wrong in this situation. But the bottom line here is <clears throat> mistress is never wrong. I mean, I'll admit when I'm wrong most parts, but there are submissives out there that love to top from the bottom. What I mean by that is <clears throat> somebody who was owned and collared uh, does not have the right to go and do things behind their mistress or master's back, which means if you are wearing a collar and you are owned by somebody, you are to ask your mistress or master permission for every fucking thing that you do, okay? This so-called submissive that I was in a relationship with never, ever asked my permission to do anything. Matter of fact, this submissive started trying to control mistress, meaning topping from the bottom, letting his vanilla life interfere with our BDSM relationship. And again, there was no TPE. There was no total power exchange. Matter of fact, this submissive tried to make me submissive to him. A big fucking no-no in any, any BDSM type situation. If you are referred to as a bottom you do not decide that you're going to top your owner or top the mistress or top the master, whatever your dynamic is. That is a big no-no. When you continually do it over and over and over again, it makes for a lot of boundaries to be crossed. Uh, again, this individual wore a collar and never knew what it fucking meant in the first fucking place. His idea of wearing my collar for the past eight years is so that he can you know, uh, cross-dress and and be um, out in the public spotlight for everyone to say, watch him and go, me, 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 okay? That's not what your fucking collar meant. Your fucking collar meant that you were submissive to me and obeyed my every command and not topped from the bottom. But that wasn't the case with this submissive. So then this submissive used to tell me over and over again that I'm not allowed to own any other submissives and I'm not allowed to do this and I'm not allowed to do that. I'm sorry, but for a 52 year old man, you are very fucking immature. Number one, number two, you do not know the first fucking thing about true BDSM. Number three, I am so fucking glad you are not my submissive any longer because when a relationship becomes toxic, in the vanilla world and then leeches over into BDSM, it's still an atrocious situation. So when this submissive broke up with me a couple of months ago for something that he said, I was cheating. Now, number one, I am not a cheater. That's number one. Number two, I have never fucking cheated on anybody I've ever been with. But when this submissive goes around telling guys that he wants to get in their pants or guys to play around with him and, and is not honest and doesn't tell these fellows that he lives with a woman. Oh, if I quote him correctly, one of the fellows he was talking to behind my back via text messages, one he tried to marry behind my back, two lied to another one and told another one that he shares a house with a woman, but it's his house though. 
and doesn't say anything about a girlfriend or a mistress or anything like that, okay? Right then and there to me was a big fucking red flag. That was the ultimate form of betrayal in my eyes. A couple of months go by, we try to work things out. I find myself still following this person and like kind of checking them out to see if they're still lying to me. And what do you know? The person was still fucking lying to me. So then I decide that, well, if this person's lying to me, why should I be honest with this person? Why should I tell them anything? Because matter, the fact of the matter is, is that mistress can have any amount of subs and slaves she wants. And the one that she lives with, who is supposed to be so-called submissive, does not get to dictate what I am supposed to be doing. Okay, that's number one. Many of my friends in BDSM had told me to regain my power, take back my power from the submissive. So guess what? I took back my fucking power. When this submissive back in October, right before we went to Exotica, had said, oh, mistress, you know, uh, I, th- I, th- I think I would be okay with you having a sex slave besides me. Even when as far as speaking to a fella on the phone, giving this fella permission to kind of fuck around with me. So whether it was this person or another person, it really doesn't matter because you gave me the authority to go and have a other sex partner besides yourself. But the only difference between myself and the ex-sub is I sleep with the opposite sex. I don't sleep with the same sex, okay? So a few other people that I've spoken to about the situation had told me that, well, th- you know, this person said that if I was going to do X, Y, and Z, it would have to be with the same sex. I'm sorry. I am not into women nor do I wish to have sex with any women, okay? I am completely heterosexual and only like dick, only like men. So when you're sitting here telling me that I can only have another sex partner, but it has to be a woman, that's fucking ridiculous, number one. Number two, when you go around telling people that you're in fact in an open relationship with your mistress, you do not have the right to tell me what I can and can't do. That's number one. Let's say we were in a relationship for 10 fucking years and I decided I wanted to have a sex slave. I wanted to have a slave to clean the house. I wanted multiple slaves for multiple reasons. You wearing a collar who is owned and collared by me do not have the right to tell me what I should and should not be doing. So for any mistresses out there that are looking to get involved with a submissive other than a dominance and submission type relationship that would just be a mistress and a submissive playing, you know, BDSM scenes and not having the vanilla relationship mixed in the mix. Okay. So an MS, a master slave or mistress uh, slave or mistress sub relationship is when the dominant is dating the submissive. Okay. A DS relationship is when the dominant is not dating the submissive or the slave, and they have a relationship based on what they both consent on, right? In the beginning, when I was first with the submissive, the submissive had told me he was bisexual. So I said, okay, well, you know, how extent is your bisexualness? And the submissive said that he needed to have sex with men. It was something he had to do. Okay, I wasn't against it because as a mistress, I kind of at the time was interested in forced by and things of that nature. And I thought it would be kind of cool to have a submissive that would be willing to suck dick for me on command, if you think about it, right? Or they were willing to do it because it was something I wanted them to do. But in this situation, this submissive was already bisexual and had a number of men that he was playing with, right? And... I kind of knew about one of them at the time. And then as the relationship progressed, it got more and more to where this submissive, all he would do is look at guys and be with guys and really wasn't chasing women because he had said, well, I have my woman. Yeah, that's great and all. 
But again, the relationship was one-sided, double standard, and his motto, do as I say, not as you do, okay? And to me, that is not acceptable. That is an unacceptable form of, again, dictating to the mistress what you want from the beginning. Now, in the, of course, I kind of put up with it here and there because I had wanted this submissive for a multitude of reasons. But due to the fact that this person never, ever learned its fucking place, and being that it was collared by me the first year, we had a little bit of an argument. This submissive actually went and removed his own collar, okay? Other mistress friends of mine, like Mistress Black Velvet in particular, she had private messaged this submissive on FetLife and wanted to know why was the reason he thought it was appropriate to uncollar himself. He never, ever, ever gave Mistress Black Velvet an answer. And it's kind of funny. Mistress Black Velvet and I still talk. And as of recently, I was letting her know about the series of events that had happened between myself and my old submissive. And she said, you know, he never, ever understood what that column meant. And it's kind of interesting. If you had listened to other shows in the past when I had this submissive on as my co-host... Other doms would ask him questions, and he didn't know how the hell to answer them. Why? Because he was not in the BDSM relationship with me for me. He was in it for him fucking self. Those people are what I like to consider fetishist. They're not submissive. They don't want to take commands from anybody else, but yet they want to do or make like a fake, a fake appearance like um, a, fa- a, a charlatan wise, like about, you know, how they can try to look like to be submissive just to ride my fucking coattails. So I kind of think about it now after the whole thing and how everything unfolded. I'm allowed to do whatever the fuck I want. And I hope you're listening to this show and I hope that you're probably sitting there cursing me out. But in reality, I'm the one in the end who won. Because I had to do something to prove a point to you that you are not going to walk all over me any fucking longer. And when I asked you in November to remove your collar and you actually did it, I was fucking quite shocked. But then again, I was like, well, he's removed his collar three or four times throughout the course of our relationship. So to me, once a submissive removes their collar, they're dismissing themselves. So that right there, right, that right then and there should have told me what kind of fucking person this was, okay? So if you are new to BDSM and you are looking to get involved with somebody, it is very good to do a consideration period. Now, my whole thing is with this submissive, I did all the steps of the collars, the training collar, the consideration collar, uh you know, a fancy collar and the final collar. <clears throat> Do you know, <clears throat> I now have a whole bunch of collars in my jewelry box that belong or used to belong to this submissive that I used to own. And it's kind of interesting. As I look at them, I look at all the memories I had with them. But you know what? They were all fake memories, if you think about it. This person wasn't in my good graces because he wanted to be for for me. He was in it for him fucking self. Think about it. He started out as a guy cross-dressing behind closed doors, PM'd me on Facebook one day about eight years ago and said that he was extremely jealous of my older cross-dresser, Paula, which I actually still own, by the way. I've owned him for the past 13 years. And... You know, here and there in my life, I had to uncollar him because his family stuff or whatever. But overall, he's the only one true slave that I can actually say that never once took off his own collar, never once disrespected me, knew and understood his fucking place. And even still, when I talk to him to this day, he tells me, mistress, That person was not a slave or a submissive to you. He was a charlatan in the lifestyle for his own gain. He says, think about it. He goes, in the beginning, this person was behind closed doors. 
was jealous of me, wanted to be in the spotlight with you. He somehow, this is what my older slave had said, that he somehow finagled me into getting rid of my older slave, which I have done several times. And at the time, I thought it was an appropriate thing to do because the fellow was older and blah, blah, blah. Now, granted, I don't have a traditional BDSM relationship with slave Paula because right now he's dealing with family issues and whatnot. But when he is able to, you know, come out and play, so to speak, then I will see him. In the interim, though, I'm completely not slaveless. I still have a slave. It's just that he, right now, like I said, he's he's kind of in the mix with personal family issues right now. So, and in reality, technically, I'm not looking to replace the one that I had because initially, Mistress would like to have some time to herself to reevaluate my role in BDSM and reevaluate my strength as a dominatrix and a mistress. The next fucking submissive that crosses my path will go through some very vigorous training. And if I notice any red flags, like I noticed with the last BDSM relationship I had, they will be cut off at the pass. Mistress will not put up with somebody topping from the bottom. Will not tell me, also will not put up with a bisexual submissive who thinks it's okay to go and do things behind my back and hide it from me. Especially when, you know, remember a couple of shows ago, if you remember correctly, this individual who I used to do the show with was talking on one of the prior episodes about how I put him on Grinder. First of all, let me just make a couple of statements here. I never put this individual on Grinder or Tinder. Matter of fact, one day, probably a few months, about eight months ago or so, this individual sat in our house here and told us, told me that he put himself on Grinder because he went on Twitter and saw that a sissy was getting all this attention and all these hot dates and blah, blah, blah. So I kind of went along with it for one of the shows. But then as I saw the evolution, the evolution and the, the pattern of continual bullshit that came out of it. Now, for one, if I'm in love with somebody, I am not going to put them on a sissy gay dating website, number one, for them to hook up. OK, that, that's the first fucking thing. And, 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 and again, when we got together, this was never discussed. This individual told me that he was going to be with this one person the rest of his life and it was going to be all just fine. Then eventually uh, this individual, um, and I'm going to say it, Cupcake had told me that he went on Grinder to replace his, his uh, long-term sex partner with the first initial with the letter R, okay? That's all I'm going to say because he said that he felt that, you know, he really wasn't doing it for him any longer. So I said, okay, whatever. I said, does he know? And he said, absolutely not. So if you're listening to the show, Mr. R, I hope that you, this shit sinks in because this individual was on Grinder behind my back, on Tinder behind my back, and also lying to you about a whole bunch of stuff. He obviously is looking to replace you because he says you bore him after 10 years. So... I never, ever put him on Grinder. That's number one. I never put him on Tinder. These are things that he did himself behind my fucking back. And then when I caught him, he profusely lied to me about it, right? So stem back to in the summertime about April or May uh, or even like spring, uh, almost about a year ago. I had a knock on the door from a woman that came to the house here at like two, three o'clock in the morning. And I was trying to figure out why there was a woman knocking at my door in the first place. And she had told me that um, she got our inf my information from her boyfriend's Tinder account. And I said, really? Well, I'm not on Tinder. She goes, no, you're, you're the guy that lives here is on the on Tinder with my boyfriend. I said, really? So this woman showed me a screenshot of Cupcake's profile on Tinder. 
And yeah, apparently he was on there looking for men, right? Didn't tell me about it. When he was on Tinder, he met several guys. One of them... Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino online. I was only playing for fun, so winning was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's favorite free online social casino. You too could have the chance to win life-changing cash prizes. Absolutely anybody could be like Mary. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumboCasino.com and play for free now. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of the winner. Texting privacy policy in terms and conditions posted at textplan.us. Texting rules for occurring automated text marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop, stop, stop. The pandemic has been hard on all our kids. New studies show more than one in three children who started school in the pandemic now need intensive reading help. Here's the good news. Your child can be reading in just 30 days, guaranteed, with Hooked on Phonics. My first grader was behind in reading, and this program has made a huge difference. She's now reading above grade level. I use it for my kids' nightly reading for school. We love it, and it's super easy and quick to do. My kid, who just turned four years old and has been using the program since January of this year, can now read read. Thank you so much, Hooked on Phonics. Even if your child has been struggling, Hooked on Phonics will teach your child to read in just 30 days, guaranteed. And right now, you can get started for just $1. Text the word KID to 323232 right now. It's fast and easy. Text KID to 323232 and teach your child to read in just 30 days, guaranteed. Text the word KID to 323232. Text KID to 323232. One was a chiropractor. Another one was uh, supposedly this gay guy that lived in Queens who was a, a promoter for trans people and was supposed to help us with the show. Yet, I never even knew about this until recently because, you know, it's one lie after another. And um, what else? And then he then told me he met this young guy um, that lived in Nebraska and he was really into him. Really into him is great and all, but when you live with a woman and you don't even tell this fucking guy that you live with a woman or have a mistress and you're sending this guy photos of yourself wearing your collar, I mean, the fuck is the matter with you? Number two, all these different things compiled mistress to, to, to really think about the relationship. At that precise time, I felt betrayed because here's Cupcake going on all these gay di dating sites behind my back and other dating sites to pick up men and God only knows what else. And here I am sitting here being accused of cheating. I never once fucking cheated or did anything. So here I am. This was eight months ago, right? The course of that whole relationship, um, I basically had, you know, thoughts of what can I do to better this situation? Is it me? Am I not attractive anymore? I mean, last time I checked, I'm pretty fucking goddamn hot. So, you know, is it possible that he's, you know, I'm not even going to say it, but put your, if you listen to the show and you put all this shit together, I'm sure you'll come up with an idea or an answer in your own brains as to the shit I was fucking dealing with. And then on top of it, you know, I have him lying to my face every five minutes about uh, things that he thinks I'm doing. And it's funny. People who are narcissistic, and they gaslight other people. They blame other people for shit that they're fucking doing. And so on and so forth, right? So, I didn't find my relationship with Cupcake to be getting any better. So, I decided as the mistress... You know what? I have every right to go through his stuff, his his phone records, to see what he's fucking doing behind my back. Because he basically sat there and lied to my fucking face for weeks about it. So when I went into his phone account, I had seen messages between him and this young boy about, or, or whatever, 21, 20, whatever the fuck. He's a boy to me. You're not a man. I'm sorry. 21 is a fucking man. Uh, about how they wanted to have sex with each other, how they wanted um, to have a relationship. Cupcake was going to fly him up here and have him stay with us. And Cupcake even said to me, oh, it would be really cool for him to sleep in the same bed as us. How are you going to explain this to the guy if you never told him about me in the first fucking place? 
So these are all my thoughts of what was going on. And as we were doing the shows, I had wanted to talk about these things. But, of course, putting him on the spot, as he would say. But you know what? You ain't fucking honest with Mistress. And I'm your girlfriend, and you're still not fucking honest with me. So here is to why I am no longer doing the shows with Cupcake. Cupcake and I broke up. Cupcake says I'm a cheater after he gave me permission to have an open relationship with him. So I met a fella a couple of months back who was my personal training client first. And then he later admitted to me that he was looking to serve a dominatrix and wanted to be spanked. And I said, well, you know what? I could probably do that for you. So guess what? I ended up playing around with this fella twice, had maybe sex with him once or twice, and that was it. And then I told him that I can't do it anymore because, honestly, I thought he was a little young, okay? I, I normally don't go after young guys. I prefer men, like, over the age of 40, okay? So, but yet, I had permission to have a fuck buddy. And somehow... Cupcake thinks I cheated and now wants me to move out of the house. First of all, what about all the shit you did to me? Try to marry. I never tried to marry anybody behind your back. Matter of fact, I never did anything until you said I could. And again, mistresses don't need permission, okay? But because I was in a relationship with you, I said, okay, let me try to do something a little different. No, this individual just doesn't give a fuck about anybody but him fucking self. And like I said, uh, the new era of BDSM Alive radio show is strictly only going to be Mistress Candy. I am no longer bringing Cupcake on the show. Cupcake told me he doesn't want to come on because, um, because I tried to replace him with someone else. The fella that I was playing around with, I thought he'd be a good submissive for maybe him and me and Cupcake to play with. I was kind of testing the waters to see. So I had said, okay, you know what? I'm going to give you this little, it was nothing. It was a little piece of shit like friendship necklace. And I said, you know what? You can hold on to this as maybe to see, to let me know if you're worthy of my attention. It was nothing. It's not like I collared this person. But see, it's kind of funny coming from somebody uh, like Cupcake who never understood or knew his place. And by the way, when we went to Exotica, um, he actually put on his own makeup, like his face makeup. But I did all of his eye makeup. And then in December, Cupcake started cross-dressing himself and putting his own makeup on after seven, almost eight fucking years of me doing makeup for this asshole. Finally, after now, he decides to do his own makeup. And honestly, it looks terrible. He needs to learn how to do his makeup better. And the only way you're going to learn is by doing it your fucking self. So any cross-dresser that wants to come and play with me, you're doing your own fucking makeup. This is not a fucking Dolly Parton Barbie fucking makeup station. I am not fucking putting anybody's makeup on ever. My other two cross-dressers that I owned before Cupcake never, ever had me put their makeup on. Why? Because it's not my fucking job. If you are a sissy, you want to be pampered, go fucking pay someone to do your fucking makeup. But I'm mistress is not fucking doing it. End of fucking story. That's just how it goes. So, this is why Cupcake and I are no longer together. Cupcake likes to call the shots in the relationship, thinks I'm the cheater, but yet you've been screwing around and trying to marry people behind my back for as long as we've been together. You know, how would you feel, how would anybody feel out there if you went through your significant other's phone and found out they were on dating apps behind your back, accusing you of cheating when you weren't even doing anything like that, and then down the road have a discussion about an open relationship. And this is really funny. Cupcake's idea of an open relationship was is that he gets to fuck around and we stay in love with each other. Really? And when I explain this to him over and over again, that is not an open relationship. That is me allowing him 
to have extra sex outside of our relationship where I get to sit back and do nothing. So guess what? Finally, after seven and a half fucking years of him going around telling people that we were in open relationships and me finding out all about all this bullshit he was fucking doing behind my back, I put my fucking foot down and said, guess what? Mistress is going to have a fuck buddy, whether you fucking like it or not. I've mentioned it several times on the radio show in the past to let him know that this is what I was looking for because I generally was unhappy in the relationship because one, he's accusing me of doing it and I wasn't doing anything at the time. Two, it's okay for you to have your fucking cake and eat it too and leave me crumbs. I don't think so. I don't eat fucking crumbs. Number three, He has become the biggest fucking baby on the face of the earth. He's blocked me on Facebook. He's blocked me on other stuff. So I didn't block him at first. And then recently on Twitter, he says to me, you have me blocked. I said, yeah, well, you have me blocked on other fucking places. So I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's unfucking believable the shit that this this guy does, right? Sorry, mistress was uh, taking a little um, break for a few minutes. Now that I don't have a co-host, I have to talk a lot, right? So anyway, and I went to go uh, have a little weed, (laughs) smoking a little bit to kind of calm my nerves, as one would say. And um, mistress is 420 friendly. So anyway, (laughs) due to the fact that... It's just a lot of things were terrible in this relationship. And I've tried and tried and tried. And I figured, you know, what can I do to try to make things better for the both of us? No matter what I did in this relationship, I was damned if I did and damned if I didn't. Okay. When Cupcake recently said that we were broken up because of what I did, he, he had said this to me. I thought I had a cougar, but I have a cheater. Well, you know what? That's really nice that you said that, but guess what? I never cheated. You gave me the authority to have an open relationship. You even spoke to a guy on the phone, okay? Like a few months before this happened, maybe in August or September, him and I had this discussion and he had said that I could have a fuck buddy or a fuck slave. So I actually went looking for one. I found a young kid, 24, really cute. Cupcake spoke to him on the phone and said, yeah, I don't have a problem with you, you know, hanging out and fucking her or whatever. So you told me once, right? Okay. I don't need to ask permission to do anything else. First of all, I don't need to ask fucking permission. Second of all, um, because I was in love with Cupcake and I was trying to make the relationship work in a vanilla level outside of BDSM. You know, it's kind of interesting. People in the BDSM lifestyle are believed to have split personalities because one day I'm mistress, another day I'm my regular self. But even still, my dominance doesn't shut off regardless, okay? So I wear different hats sometimes, but in my regular and mistress life, I'm always that same dominance crazy bitch I've always been. Why? Because that's who I am. Now, when I'm out in public with vanilla friends, I have to curb my enthusiasm because they, they, can't, they can't understand that I'm a little bit more, you know, vile than most people, I guess is a nice way to put it. So to make a long story short, you know, I am who I am and that's the end of it. No man, no submissive, no fucking guy that sits here and tells me they're in love with me is going to tell me what to fuck to do when they're in fact having their fucking cake and eating it too. And then some, and then telling me I'm not allowed to do this. And just kind of funny, the other day I had told Cupcake, I said, listen, just to let you know, I'm going back on night flirt. I need to make some money. You want me to move out of the house? So I need to make some money. And I'm going to tell you another story. When Cupcake went to my job back in December, when she did he, he, because he's not a she, he did his own makeup. He went into my job and actually had a fight with my store manager. 
And guess what happened with that? I got fired because of Cupcake. When I tried to apply for unemployment, unemployment sends me a letter and states that I didn't qualify because my boyfriend went into the store and started a fight with the store manager. And because I laughed at it, I uh, egged on inappropriate behavior and I had signed an anti-harassment policy, which I did, but I don't remember it saying anything like that, but whatever. I was fired because of Cupcake. Cupcake cheats on me for eight years with men and whoever else behind my back, and there's probably more things that I don't even know. And then, on top of it, gets me fired from my job, then tells me I have to move out of his house, and I'm still not working. He doesn't want me doing my night flirt. Last night, he texted me and goes, you have some pair of balls to to do your night flirt. First of all, you're not my boyfriend, and you're not my sub anymore, so guess what? You do not have the fucking right to tell me what I can and can't do. End of fucking story. Like, you know, am am I wrong to say this? Absolutely not. I am not wrong to say anything like that. Because why? It's the fucking God honest truth. You don't want anything to do with me. You block me everywhere. And now you're going to sit here and stalk me and look to see if I'm doing phone sex. (laughs) Dude, get a fucking life, seriously. <laughs> like, like every single, like, I'm back on FetLife. I'm back on Twitter. I'm back on Facebook. I'm on all my social media. Why? Because I'm not going to let some fucking dickweed tell me what I can and can't do. We're not together anymore. You're not my submissive. You never fucking what? End the fucking story. You don't need to tell mistress what she should and shouldn't be fucking doing. How about this? Take control of your own fucking life. Stop your lying and your bullshit games and be more honest with yourself. And maybe you'll be a more fucking happier person. But instead, this is somebody who swore up and down they were in love with me. But this is how I get treated in the end. It's fucking quite comical if you ask me. True traits of a fucking typical narcissist. And um, definitely not a submissive. So women, if you're out there patrolling for subs, you might want to stay away from him because he is not submissive at all, unless you have a dick between your legs. If you're a guy with a real dick between your legs, he bends down like a little puppy dog, like, oh, fuck me. You know what? If you're a woman with authority that wears a strap on, he won't bend down to kiss your feet because to, to you, to him, you are inferior to him. He has an inferiority complex. End of fucking story. And, you know, as a dominatrix for 31 years, I can honestly say I've had my slew of terrible submissives. But honestly, Cupcake takes the fucking cake out of fucking all of them. I was talking to this woman that I know that lives in upstate New York who's in BDSM, by the way. And I had said to her, I said, do you remember uh, Sissy Tammy who lived in my house? And she goes, yeah. I said, she goes, well, what do you say? I said, honestly, when I explained to her everything I just told all you wonderful folks about the, on the show about the end of my relationship with Cupcake and as to why it had happened, um, she says to me, she goes, wow, honestly, he makes sissy Tammy look like a fucking martyr. I said, exactly. And, and Tammy was fucking, I thought was the worst one possible. But see, Tammy and I did not have a relationship. Like, I wasn't dating Tammy. Tammy was just a slave that lived in my house. But he dumb hopped, did shit very similar to this behind my fucking back. Uh, Never asked my permission to go out and have sex with dudes for his own need. And didn't really give a shit. So after a few months of that, I decided, fuck you, I'm done. I took Tammy's collar off and asked him to move out of my house. So, and he did. But the fact of the matter is is that you have to be careful who you allow in your good graces. These fucking guys are batshit fucking crazy. And all they care about is them fucking selves and their own fucking needs. So, you know. So, with that being said, Mistress has decided that the split was for the best. And, um... 
I'm going to focus on myself and continue to do my awesome radio shows because I know you people have been messaging me on Twitter and FetLife and Facebook and other places and letting me know that you've missed me. You didn't know what happened to me. You asked if I was okay. Um, I'm okay. I'm getting my life back together. And guess what? Nobody ever, ever tells Mistress Candy 69 what to do. No fucking sub, no man, nobody, okay? I am my own person, and guess what? I now realize that my relationship with Cupcake was fake for almost eight years. Totally fake. It's funny, he sits here and says how I'm fake, but you know what? I'm not the faker. I'm not the one that went out and fucked people behind your back when I thought we weren't in an open relationship. Before... He even said anything to me about an open relationship up until this past year. But I found out otherwise. He's been on FetLife and other fucking places telling men and women that he's in an open relationship with a woman. He even told his fucking sister this, who then told me like a month before I did what I did with his permission. So you go around telling people for fucking years you're in an open relationship, but a one-sided open relationship. So you basically get to continue to do the same shitty, dirty things that you would do with yourself if you were single, but you just wanted to continue to do them while you were with me. And honestly, I'm starting to think all this terrible shit about him, that he's not real. I think that he's really, his sexuality is something else. That's, that's besides the fucking point. Um, mutual friends, when I tell them my side of the story after they had already spoken to him, they tell me, wow, he doesn't say anything like that. Of course not, because he wants to make himself look like the victim. All narcissists make themselves out to be the fucking victims, when in fact, they're the ones doing the victimizing, okay? They're the ones lying. They're the ones cheating. They're the ones gaslighting. They're the ones projecting their guiltiness onto you for something they fucking did behind your back. So guess what, Cupcake? I have fucking figured you out. You are, in fact, a fucking narcissist. End of fucking story. You, you know... And it's not just about the, the vainness being like looking in the mirror and saying, oh, I look great today. I, I just worked out and my muscles look great. That's not about it. That, that's being vain. That's vanity. Narcissism is something totally fucking different. It's when you take control of your partner, right? I'm a mistress. You somehow wanted to take over my life and control me and tell me what to do. You made me stop talking to Bella. You made me stop talking to Paula. You made me stop, stop talking to every single friend that I had. Why? So you can keep me close to you. So you can have total control over me. Guess what, motherfucker? I figured you out a long time ago. And that's why I continue to talk to people like my friends behind your back. Because you are not going to tell me what I can and can't do. Now, when this asshole finds out that I'm doing things, going back to doing the show, going back on social media. Now he tells me he doesn't want me living in his house any longer. Yeah, you know why? Because you can't control me. And I'm, I'm standing up for myself and telling you in a nice way to go fuck yourself. I am done. You are not pushing me to do anything. You're not take, keeping me away from family and friends. You are not controlling me any fucking longer. End of fucking story. Um, even if I was your girlfriend, I still wouldn't put up with your fucking bullshit. I would still move the fuck out of the house when I was able to. And honestly, when I do move out, he thinks I'm going to talk to him. <laughs> yeah, right. Talking to him is like clapping with one hand. You get no response, okay? So no fucking thank you. I am not talking to him. I do not want a relationship with him. Why? Because this is what a narcissist does. Read all about narcissistic personality disorder and you'll see like all my ex-slaves at the top of the list. Cupcake, Tammy, Noah, all of them. Every fucking single last one of them will be listed on there. Why? Because they're all fucking narcissists. Simple fucking fact. So... 
And it's kind of interesting. I think like, you know, I, I really feel bad for his, his other sex partner of 10 years. Cause this guy's being fucking lied to. Like you wouldn't fucking believe. So Roman, if you're listening, uh, yeah, cupcake is on grinder and Tinder behind your back looking to replace you because he says you just don't do it for him any longer. And come on. Then he goes and tells his sister and some other people that I'm on dating apps behind his back. Really? I'm not on any fucking dating apps because why? I'm not looking to date anybody. And number two, I don't need to go on dating apps to meet people. Like, seriously. (laughs) I could just go out in the fucking street and meet somebody. Like, people who know what I look like, I don't need help on finding, like, men, okay? (laughs) That's, like, ridiculous. But again, the grandiose, a grandiose appearance, gaslighting, lying, um, doing shit and then blaming me for it. But you know what? No matter how you slice it and dice it, I never once cheated on you, ever. You gave me permission. Remember that. Just because it wasn't the guy that you actually spoke to on the phone to give me permission, um, you gave me permission regardless. So guess what? Put that in your fucking pipe and smoke it because you gave me the permission. We were in an open relationship. So guess what? I did not cheat on you. I just wanted to have some fun because here I am having sex with one guy for seven and a half, almost eight years, and you're having sex outside of our relationship. And I don't care that you told me once. Telling me once, right, for him was a different story because he told me once and then was continually, it never stopped. And then it even went to the point where he tried to marry somebody. And no matter how you slice it and dice it, I have a folder here. I'm not saying where it is. It is filled with All the text messages between him and his little boyfriends, the chiropractor, uh, the Chinese guy, the fucking, the, the fag and Queens that he was talking to that does radio promotion, which by the way, he never told me about it until like yesterday. And then, um, what else? And then the young kid, he tried to marry behind my back, the kid, AJ, So, you know what, I have, oh, and then the other guy that he tried to bring here behind my back and wanted to collar behind my back, that's right, Cammy. he wanted, he was on Tinder or Grindr and met a little, looks like Paul Stanley with makeup on, I thought, he thought he was hot, I thought he was fucking atrocious, but whatever, um, he wanted to bring him here and lock him in the basement under the stairs and keep him captive there and collar him and doesn't tell this guy about me as being his mistress or his girlfriend. And all the text messages, it stated that he shared a house with a woman, but it's my house though. Yeah. So again, here I am. This all happened to me like probably a few weeks before I had permission to have the open relationship and I I'm considered a cheater. Yeah. Okay. So guess what? I'm going to end this note on this show for tonight. And when you listen to the Saturday show about all my different fetishes, please give me your thoughts about these things. Uh, mistress is flying solo. I do not need a fucking co-host. I actually find it quite interesting to have no co-host because I have nobody cutting me off, nobody over talking me and nobody telling me at the end of the show that I didn't let him talk. Last time I fucking checked, it's the Mistress Candy and So-So show, right? Now it's the Mistress Candy Presents BDSM a live radio show with a new era with just mistress and I can promise you all that in the next couple of weeks I'm going to be having a bunch of dominance on uh, as guests if you want to call in and be part of my show you can text or call 516-406-3512 that's the show number for the radio show and it also is a text phone so you can text on it also you can also find me on Twitter at MistressC69. And on Instagram, I have two accounts at The Real Mistress C69 
at the real Mistress Candy 69. And please go to my website, www.mistress, M I S T R E S S, Candy 69.net. And then it's Mistress Candy 69.net and www.bdsmaliveradio.com. And you can go on there. And you will only get me because Cupcake is not affiliated with the show in any way, shape, or form. He has told me back in November that he is not doing the show with me anymore. And quite honestly, I could really give two fucks, to tell you the truth. Because, like I said, the fans wanted to hear from me, not him. End of story. So thanks for listening to my show tonight. And by the way, our show is sponsored by Spunk Lube. And, um, and I also want to thank Blitz Kid for letting me use their song, She Dominates. I've been using it since 2018. And thank you, guys. It is very fitting for my show. Because guess what? I fucking dominate. And I fucking rule. End of story. Stay tuned for this another show the following week. And if you, like I said, want to be a guest, call in. Find me. Email me. Send me smoke signals. And you can be on the show. Thanks for listening and have a great, wonderful fucking evening. Thank you very, very much. Good night.